Yamaha's tiered model approach is nothing new, offering different trims to cater to both budget-conscious buyers and those seeking enhanced performance. This strategy is evident in the 2024 Hypernaked MT, 09-MT, 09SP models, with the MT, 09SP delivering premium features for riders willing to pay a bit more. Like the larger MT, 10-MT, 10SP, the MT, 09SP brings a variety of upgrades designed to enhance the riding experience. For 2024, Yamaha unveiled the all-new MT-09, a standout in its hyper-naked lineup. Alongside the base model, the SP variant adds a collection of performance-focused features and styling enhancements. Priced at $12,299, dollar one, 700 more than the standard model. The MT-09 SP justifies the price difference with upgraded suspension, high-end brakes, additional electronic rider aids, keyless ignition, and unique design touches. During a press event, we had the chance to test the MT-09 SP on the scenic, winding roads of southeastern Tennessee and western North Carolina, including the legendary tale of the dragon. Our goal? To see if the SP model's extra cost is worth the investment. Hashtag, hashtag, hashtag engine and performance. The MT-09SP shares its powertrain with the base model, featuring Yamaha's 890 cubic centimeters CP3 inline triple engine. This setup includes double overhead cams for valves per cylinder and 41 millimeters throttle bodies controlled by Yamaha's chip controlled throttle YCCD. Inside, you'll find forged aluminum pistons, fracture split forged connecting rods, and direct plated ceramic composite cylinders. With a bore and stroke of 78.0 by 62.1 millimeters and a compression ratio of 11.5 to 1, the engine is built for robust performance. Power is delivered to the rear wheel through an updated transmission featuring new gears for improved shift engagement, supported by an assist and slipper clutch. The bike also includes Yamaha's third-generation Quick Shift System, QSS, allowing for seamless clutchless up and down shifts. The QSS settings can be adjusted electronically to suit rider preferences. While Yamaha hasn't provided official power figures, the last MT-09 tested on the dyno in 2021 produced 107.2 horsepower at 9,950 RPM and 63.3 pound FT of torque at 7,050 RPM. With all these features packed into the MT-09 SP, it's clear Yamaha designed this model to offer riders a significant step up in performance and refinement, making it a worthy contender for those seeking more from their hyper-naked ride. The MT-09 stands out as the true sweet spot in Yamaha's naked bike lineup, thanks largely to its stellar CP3 engine. While the MT-10 boasts the raw power of a YZF R1, derived 998 cubic centimeters in line four, it doesn't offer the same versatility and rider friendliness as the MT-09's 890 cubic centimeters in line triple in everyday scenarios. The CP3 engine excels both in daily commutes through traffic and when pushed hard on a favorite back road, making it an ideal all-around performer. We put the MT-09 to the test on a 165-mile street ride, tackling some of the country's most impressive roads. From the fast, flowing curves of the Cherahala Skyway to the tight, technical twists of the tail of the Dragon, the CP3 engine proved its versatility. On the more open roads, the mid-range to top-end power came alive, and the seamless quickshifter kept the bike in its sweet spot. On the tighter roads of the tail of the Dragon, the engine demanded frequent shifts between second and third gear to avoid the slight flat spot around 4,000 to 5,000 RPM, but it remained responsive and lively throughout. One thing is clear, the MT-09 CP3 engine is an absolute blast. It delivers more than enough performance to keep you grinning without overwhelming you. With lift control turned down or off and the traction control dialed back, the MT-09 feels spicy, fun, and engaging, yet never intimidating like some of the bigger open-class naked bikes we have ridden. While dialing back the electronics on a KTM 1390 Super Duke, our Evo or Ducati Street Fighter V4 can feel risky. The MT-09 SP offers power that's easy to manage, making it a more accessible and enjoyable ride. Electronics. The engine on the SP 
may not have received any upgrades over the base model, but some of the additions to the rider aids and convenience features on the SP give the rider more control and provide a more premium character. Let's start with the new smart key system, as that's the very first interaction you have with the bike when you walk up to it. Like most keyless systems, you simply leave the fob in your pocket, then you turn the switch, where a key would normally go, to on, and then you can start the motorcycle. You can lock the steering by turning the switch all the way to the left, and also open the electronic release for the fuel tank cap. The system is easy and intuitive to use, and we never had any issues during our day on the bike. The SP gets two additional rider aid options compared to the standard bike. The first is the electronic back slip regulator, BSR, that aids the slipper clutch in reducing rear wheel lockup under engine braking. The second item is the ability to turn off the rear ABS and basically give the bike a supermoto-like braking mode. Otherwise, the SP has the same suite of rider aids that are found on the standard model. A 6-axis IMU provides the ECU with information for the Lean Sensitive Traction Control, TCS, and ABS systems. There are three available TCS settings in addition to OFF, while the Brake Control System, with ABS, allows the rider to choose between Lean Sensitive Capability or Standard ABS, in addition to the ability to turn the rear off. The Yamaha Ride Control, YRC, settings allow the rider to choose between three standard modes including Sport, street and rain there are also two custom modes that can be tailored to preference and then exclusive to the sp are four more track modes that allow even more customization within those options are controls for power tcs slide control scs wheelie control lif bsr engine brake management ebm and abs settings access to the settings can be done through the new five inch full color tft display and the new left handlebar control pod. Or riders can use the Y-Connect app that connects your smartphone to the bike via Bluetooth. Cruise control is also standard. From a functional perspective, the new control pod and menu navigation on the bright and organized dash are very intuitive. Having not used the new system before, it took only a few seconds to figure out the logic and find all of the options for customizing the settings to preference. There is also a big mode button on the right control pod that allows you to toggle through the ride modes on the fly. Our only complaint is that the new turn signals took a bit of getting used to with a rocker style button that requires you to cancel with the same button you hit to initiate the signal. A light tap will just give three blinks for lane changes or a long tap will start the process for longer. The latter will self cancel after 15 seconds. After an hour or so on the bike and figuring out the sequence, we adjusted and appreciated the change. For around town riding or a more casual pace, the standard ride modes are well calibrated and function as you would expect. It's only if you really want to fine tune the modes for aggressive riding that you really need to get into the weeds and tweak individual aids. For our ride, we dialed the LIF, ABS, and EBM to preference and set the power to setting one max.